Hi everyone, today's video is a hotly requested topic which is how to make revision notes and more importantly how you can actually remember what you've written so you can score really highly in the exam. So I'm going to talk through the methods on how you're going to actually create those revision notes whether it's flashcards or typing them up and then how you can actually go about learning what you've written. Now the first thing you need to do is pick a topic that you're going to make your notes about. Let's for example pick the kidney. Now it's really important that before you start making your revision notes that you understand the topic fully. That's not to say you need to be able to recall it perfectly, but you need to know that when you read through those notes that you actually understand what's going on because how on earth are you possibly going to answer an exam question if you don't know what the topic is about. So pick what you're going to do. You might want to read BBC Bite Size, you might want to read your textbook, your class notes, um, you may want to watch my video on the kidney if that's the sort of thing which helps. But whatever you do, just read through those notes, understand the structure, the glomerulus, the bones capsule, um, how ADH works, anything like that, and just go through it and make sure you get it, because you can't start making notes until you fully understand the topic. Now you're ready to make your notes, and at this point you want to pick one source to actually make your notes from. I don't recommend textbooks, they're a bit too wordy and you end up writing out huge chunks of textbook, which are really hard to remember. Um, maybe use your class notes if you've got very good notes that your teacher's given you or use your revision guide. People often say to me that they're nervous about using their revision guide as the basis of their revision, but actually they're really good. They have everything you need to get the top grades because honestly they wouldn't be allowed to make revision guides which didn't have all the material you needed. So rest assured, everything is there that you need. So now we're ready to make our notes. Um, obviously everyone's different. Some people I've known from uni never needed to make notes and that's cool. Don't feel pressured to make them if you're one of those people that doesn't need to. But I do know that for most people out there they will need to have some kind of written notes. So the two methods I suggest in science particularly is um, either using flashcards or typing up your notes on the computer if that's how you prefer to do it. So let's look at the flashcard way first of all. Now remember in science a huge amount of it is factual recall, so it's things like define the meaning of ultrafiltration, what is an alkane, define hydrocarbon, what are the units to measure currents in electricity, so all those sorts of questions. Obviously there are some longer mark questions out there, but a huge amount of it is just being able to remember stuff and write it down. So this is how you, I'm going to recommend that you actually do that remembering and fact recall. So I've got my textbook here. I don't have revision guides because I'm a tutor. You should be using your revision guide because you don't want as much information. However, let me just show you what I'm going to do. So I've got these little cards. Um, they are annoyingly expensive, so if you don't want to use them, feel free to get like A4 printer paper, which is super cheap, and just cut the pieces up yourself using scissors. You can do that just as easily if your parents aren't happy forking out. This was £3, which I just thought was ridiculous, especially as I've only bought them for this video. But anyway, I love you guys, so you're worth the £3. So let's take the alkane topic. What I suggest you do, for example, is write something like define hydrocarbon. So on one side I've written define hydrocarbon, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to write a perfect def definition on the other side. I'm going to say it's a substance containing only, and remember marking schemes require you to say only in your answer to get both marks, hydrogen and carbon. So that is my first card done, and I'm not actually going to write anything else on that card. I'm going to keep that as one question and one answer. So the problem I can see is that it is going to be really expensive, which is why I do recommend that you use your A4 paper if you're not happy about using a card per question. The next question I might write is, what is the general formula? of the alkanes and my textbook and notes will tell me that that is CN H2N plus 2 so for example methane remember that's one carbon so it would be CH4 in that case and then I might say going on going off on a bit of a tangent so what is the first alkane and there, you want to include quite a lot of information. You want to write everything you can about methane. So you're going to name it, so it's methane. Then you're going to write the molecular formula, which is CH4. And I might actually write next to it, molecular formula. And then I might draw the structural formula, because that's also essential that you know that. And remember, that's when you draw out all the bonds. And there, that is a perfect first alkane flashcard and I can obviously do the same for ethane, propane, butane 
And I can do the same for all the alkenes. I can have a question, which is, what is the general formula of the alkenes? And then we can then talk about ethene, propene, butene, and all have a card. So eventually, once you've made these notes, you'll have a nice stack of them. And then when it comes to actually revising, you can literally look at them and be like, what is the first alkane? And then you're going to think about the answer. Obviously, you're not going to cheat unless you need to. You're going to be like, oh, I think it's this. And then the great thing about it is you're going to flip it over and you'll know straight away if you know that answer or not. There'll be no kidding yourself that you think you know it. Either you'll know it or you don't because your answer will match that flashcard. And this works across all the sciences. I really, really recommend it. Should we look at a bit of biology now? So just to show this approach also works with biology, let's take the menstrual cycle. It's quite a complicated topic, you need to know a lot. So one of the questions you might want to know is, where does fertilisation take place? The answer there is the fallopian tube, or the oviduct, depending on what you've been taught. So again, it works very well for biology. Because the menstrual cycle is quite a tricky topic, I'm also going to cover another question, which is, what is the role of oestrogen? And then on the back, you're going to write something like, it builds up the uterus lining, or it is involved in the secondary sexual characteristics in females. Obviously, there'll be some questions where you can't just write the question and write just an answer or a definition. It might be something like the fact that you need to know the structure of a plant cell, but that's just as easily done. You can just say on one side, draw and label a plant cell, and on the other side, you'll have the perfect answer. And then when it comes to actually using the flashcard, just draw your um, plant cell out really quickly and see if it matches what you've got on the other side of the flashcard. So it does work every time. Um, with physics, there's a lot of maths involved, like with momentum and moments and things. You can easily write an example of a momentum question, you know, when the two trucks collide, they stick together, move along. Put some numbers down, copy the examples you've been given in class, write the perfect answer on the back and just practice it. And if you get the same answer, you know you're doing really well. If you're less keen on writing yourself questions or you're struggling to actually work out the question you want to ask and you just want to make notes, the crucial thing here is to be really concise with science because if you look at the mark schemes you can see very easily sometimes you can get five marks by writing five words as long as those words are specialist enough. So just to show you what I mean. So let's take the waste topic in physics for example. Now a key definition you'll need, you'll need to know is that for longitudinal waves. So I'm going to write longitudinal here. I'm going to get the perfect def definition for my notes or my textbook. I'm going to write here that it's a wave where vibrations occur, and the key word here is parallel to the direction in which the wave is travelling. So that is done. Paired with that is the definition for the transverse wave. So I'm going to be really careful and make sure I use exactly the same language to make it easier for me to remember but rather than saying that it's parallel, the key word here is perpendicular. If you don't like the word perpendicular, you can write right angles. It's really hard to talk and type. I promise I can actually type quite well normally. But look, there are typos all over the place. So yeah, I'm using exactly the same language to help me remember it, and I'm going to highlight the key words here, which is parallel and perpendicular. And at this point, I'm going to make these notes slightly more detailed, and I'm going to say a couple of examples for each type of wave. So remember, your key longitudinal wave example is sound waves. Transverse waves are pretty much every other wave type, such as water waves, the members of the electromagnetic spectrum, and that obviously includes light. So that's the sort of thing you're after. Another sensible thing would be to write the wave equation. So remember, that is wave speed equals frequency. And you need detail here. Put that as hertz times wavelength, which is measured in metres, and that will give us a wave speed which is in metres per second, so do pop in the units when you can. And you can see very quickly I'm building up very detailed notes, but not writing very much at all. So once you've made your notes and you've got a nice stack, um, what you want to then do is make sure you actually go over what you've written, because there's no point making them and then just never looking at them. So a really good thing to do is say you've made notes on the kidney in the morning, make yourself look at those notes in the evening or in the afternoon, just go through it once and that will super help cement it. If you're feeling really, really good, look at it again the next day, but don't spend too long, just re-read it. 
Um, and then even a week later, and before you know it, you'll actually know that information without actually too much effort, and especially for people who are struggling with their memory, because some people do struggle to learn lots and lots of information. It is really difficult. It is simply going over and over and over that information that will help you. And obviously, don't forget the importance of past papers. You must do as many past paper questions on the topics as possible. They're all online. And whatever you do, look at the mark schemes, because it's really frustrating sometimes when you think you've written a really perfect answer but because the mark scheme is so specific, you haven't actually quite picked up those marks. So for example, the hydrocarbon definition, so frustrating if you've written a substance containing hydrogen and carbon, because obviously that makes a huge amount of sense. It should be worth all the marks you need. But unfortunately, if you don't have the word only in, you'll lose a whole mark, and you don't want to be dropping easy marks like that. So I can't, you can't underestimate basically the importance of past papers. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I really hope you found this video useful, and give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. See you.